this is going to be another question and answer video. And the question is, when did the Jews start? Is it from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, or the 12 tribes? Well, Abraham is the first Jew. Now, the Jews are called Hebrews because they came from a man named Eber. You see, Abraham is a Hebrew because he came from Eber, E-B-E-R. In Genesis 11, 17 through 26, you'll see that he is in the line of the man named Eber. See, Genesis eleven seventeen. it says, And Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years and begat sons and daughters. And then finally you get down to verse 26, and it says, And, and Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So he is a Hebrew because he came from Eber. Now, Abraham came from Adam, Seth, Noah and Shem. You can find, you can see the line of the promised seed all the way through the book of Genesis. The line that the Lord Jesus Christ would come from. Flowing through Adam would have been Abel, but Abel was killed. So it went on to Seth, Adam, Seth, Noah, and Shem. He's in that line. So Abraham is a Shemite because he came from Shem. And when someone hates Jews today, what do they call them? Anti-Semites or anti-Semitic. Semitic. And that's why they call them that. Because they're in the line of Shem. But Abraham is the first Jew because he is the first one that God gave the covenant to. You see, Noah, although they're in the line of Abraham... They're his ancestors. They're not the first Jews. Abraham is the first Jew because he's the first one that God gave the covenant to. He promised him the land. He gave him the land grant. And he promised him a seed. And also gave him the sign of circumcision. And you know what? The Jews require a sign. Abraham is the one who God first introduced circumcision to in Genesis 17:11. And that's why when you are reading the Bible and it's talking about the circumcision, when it's talking about a people and it refers to them as the circumcision, it's referring to the Jews. And when you see it and it's talking about the uncircumcision, it's referring to the Gentiles, those who aren't a Jew. So Abraham's the first Jew. He's given the sign of circumcision. Abraham has a son named Isaac who was the promised seed that the Lord had promised him. And the Lord Jesus Christ would come from that promised seed. And then Isaac has a son named Jacob. In Genesis thirty-two twenty-eight, it says, And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. So Jacob gets his name changed to Israel. Jacob, or Israel, has 12 sons known as the 12 tribes. And from those 12 tribes comes the nation of Israel. And the, since, you know, Jacob's name is changed to Israel, so they are now called the children of Israel. And in uh, Genesis 34, 7, you can find where it starts to refer to the people of Israel as Israel. And there it's not just referring to the in individual man Jacob. It's calling the people Israel. In Genesis 34, 7, it says, And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wrought folly in Israel. Notice how it's used referring to the people as a whole. And not just to the individual man, Israel, which is Jacob. So one of the twelve sons of Jacob, Jacob being Israel, was named Judah. And from him you had the tribe of Judah. 
And that's obviously the tribe that Jesus comes from. Revelation 5.5, 5, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And But um, way later on in 2 Kings 16.6, the word Jew came about as a shortening of Judah. And like I said, Judah, that's the tribe that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come from when you see him show up in the Gospels there. But that's the first time you see the word Jew in Second Kings 16, 6. You see the word Jew, Jews. And it's just, and it's they started uh, calling on that because it's a sh kind of a shortening of Judah. And then eventually, people from all 12 tribes would begin to be referred to as Jews. So, they're Hebrews because they came from Eber. They're Shemites because they came from Shem. They're called the children of Israel because Jacob, who birthed the 12 tribes, um, he got his name changed to Israel so that the children of Israel and they're called Jews because in 2 Kings 16 6 you see the word Jews pop up having to do with specifically Judah the kingdom of Judah it's just a shortening of Judah and eventually all of them would be just just be called Jews so that's that's what I get out of it And something else, in Romans 11, 1, it says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Now, this is Paul talking. And Paul says, for I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's not only the seed of Abraham, he calls himself an Israelite as well. And he says in Philippians 3, 5, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. So he's a he's an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, and a Hebrew. And then he says in Galatians two fifteen, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. So he's a Jew, he's a Hebrew, he's an Israelite, he's a seed of Abraham. So all those things go together. He's all those things. Paul says he's an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the stock of Israel, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, and a Jew by nature. So they're Hebrews because they came from Eber, the seed of Abraham because he was, Abraham was the first Jew, Israelites because Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and the nation came from his twelve sons, and then they were called Jews because of the shortening of the name Judah. And in the Bible, you will find Israel as a nation referred to as Israel. Or you could find the people, the nation of Israel, referred to as Jacob at times. When the Bible says Jacob, it might not be referring to just the individual son of Isaac, but to the nation as a whole. For example, in Jeremiah 30 and verse 7, it says the time of Jacob's trouble. That's referring to the troublous time on the whole nation of Israel in the Great Tribulation, not just not to the man. And one of the mysteries in the Bible is the blindness of the nation of Israel. It's a really important thing that you get this down because it's getting so screwed up today. And most of the cults believe that God's done with Israel and that they've replaced Israel. In Romans 11.25, it says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. Now, that's not just referring to the man. That's not, not referring to the man. That's referring to the nation. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming in, it says. So the nation of Israel as a whole rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and began to, and God began to turn to the Gentiles and deal with the church. He's temporarily got Israel on the shelf until that future time period when he's going to go back dealing with them again. And you see individual Jews still getting saved today when they believe the gospel, but Israel as a whole is blind in part. 
Then it says in Romans 11, 26, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You see that? From Jacob. Not the man. But see how it can say Jacob referring to the people as a whole who came from Jacob, which is Israel. Then it says, For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Notice it says, When I shall take away their sins. So for the people who believe this, that the church replaced Israel, that Israel is the church and the church is Israel, this would make no sense. Because this has nothing to do with me and you, or anyone in the church, because our sins are already taken away. Now here is your balanced view you should have on the Jew. It says in Romans eleven twenty eight, As concerning the gospel... They are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. So concerning the gospel, they are our enemies. Israel doesn't even believe Jesus is God. But as touching the election, they are, real, they are beloved for the Father's sake. The fathers, as in the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're beloved because of that promise that God gave way back in Genesis that still stands today. They are beloved enemies.